Today on the IoT Show, we'll talk about the new features that the device provisioning service offers, and uh, we have Nicole Birdie for that, uh, immediately with tons of nice demos. Hey, hi everybody, this is the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host. Today I have Nicole Birdie with me. Hey, Nicole. Hi, Olivier. How are you? I'm doing wonderfully. How are you? Good. You're becoming a regular here on the show, uh, and that's that I awesome. Am. Do I do I get like a punch card for? I get a sticker. Oh, okay, I'll take it. Yeah, you'll I have. I think I've got some space. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> so you're here to talk about DPS. So we we talked about the device provision service already, but you have updates for us, right? Because yes, that do. feature that that service actually is growing and is becoming more and more. Uh, you know, used by our customers, and customers have requests for new features and additions, yeah. right? That's right. We, in fact, with this release, which we're we're kind of dubbing our anniversary release, since okay. the device provisioning service went public preview last September. Okay. Uh, and we have a little something for everybody, from the people who are just looking to get started with the provisioning service, okay. up through people who have very complex provisioning needs and need a little bit more control over how their devices get provisioned in order to get there. Okay. Was well, one thing in mind all the time: secure. Security, 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 right? Of course. Awesome. So what are these new things, new features, new functionalities that have been added? And then you came because you're Nicole, you came with demos. That's right. right. So you're gonna, we're going to go through detail through demos, but in yep. a nutshell, what is it you're going to demo in a minute? Yeah, so I have four main features that I'm going to be demoing mm -hmm. today. Uh, the first is a new way of authenticating devices with the provisioning service, okay. and that's symmetric key auth. Mm -hmm. uh, symmetric key auth was one of the, the major asks from our customers who okay. saw that it was available in IoT Hub and asked why they couldn't have it in the provisioning service as well. Okay. And so we have symmetric key authentication with DPS available okay. both for individual enrollments as well as enrollment groups. Okay. Uh, enrollment groups are very interesting because you might think, okay, well, symmetric uh, keys and yeah. groups like, Surely, surely Nicole is not about to say we were going to use the same key everywhere. Yes. And that's right, dear listeners, we are not. <laughs> um, we actually use a key diversification scheme so mm -hmm. that each device still uses a unique ID and key to connect with the provisioning service. Okay. But from a, a device management point of view from the service end, you still only need one group to define all of the devices that will come through. Okay. So it's a real time saver and still gives you the same amount of security okay. as you get with IoT Hub with a symmetric key. Makes sense. So that's symmetric key support yeah. now. Second. The, the next one is automatic device reprovisioning. Okay. So when a device first talks to the provisioning service and says, hey, I'm a device, where do I go? Yep. We'll assign it to an IoT hub. Mm -hmm. um, but something might change later in that device's life cycle. Yep. That means that that device now needs to be assigned to a different IoT hub okay. instead. And before this release, you had to go through and clean up things manually. And while you could do it, it was a little painful. Mm -hmm. So we took all, all that pain away and automated the process. Okay. So your devices would be either migrated or reset over to a new IoT hub uh, of your choosing, depending on however you want to set it up. Okay. Yeah. So those that's feature number two. Yeah. Features number three and four are for customers with more complex uh, provisioning needs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and that's uh, allows you a little bit more control over how your devices are allocated among your IoT hubs. Yep. First, we added per gr uh, enrollment allocation support. Mm -hmm. So for each of my allocation groups, I can, or each of my enrollment groups, I can use a different allocation policy to, s okay. to specify how devices go through, which is really important for customers who deal with large multi-tenant uh, type scenarios mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, the second one is a new type of allocation policy mm -hmm. called custom allocation. Okay. And that is that allows customers to do whatever they want to figure out where the devices need to go. With so their own logic, basically. With their own logic. Okay. When, when a device comes in, if it's part of a group with a custom allocation mm -hmm. set up, we'll basically trigger an Azure function you can do whatever you want in that Azure function mm -hmm. as long as that function returns to the provisioning service, which IoT Hub that device Got goes it. to, yeah. and what initial config it needs. Awesome. If I want to allocate to a specific IoT Hub all my pink devices yeah. and all my blue ones into another one, yeah. you can do that, right? Yeah, and if you want to look up who bought the device in your own ERP system, go for it. You don't need yeah, to, to yeah, totally. replicate your data. Okay. Awesome. Good scenarios. Yeah. Let's get to it. We want to see the demos. All right. So today <laughs> we are going to be talking about my favorite fame. Uh, fictitious toaster company, okay. Toasters Are Us. <laughs> and uh, I've, I've set it up with two different uh, enrollment groups. Both mm -hmm. are using the symmetric key okay. um, attestation. So for this first one, I'm going to do something pretty simple, where each device as it comes through will be assigned to a specific IoT hub. Okay. Uh, and each of my devices is going to be using a key derived from this okay. primary key, okay. which will be rolled after this recording. 
Okay. So uh, <laughs> Don't I try and read it. It's useless. Like <laughs> <laughs> basically, so um, I want to assign all of these toasters to Toasters RS East okay. because these are all going to be shipped to the East Coast. Okay. Uh, and I want to set up a tag of use case of demo. Uh, okay. I could set up some desired properties if I want, yep. but I've got yep. automatic device config set up on this hub, so mm -hmm. it's I could or could not. Okay. Uh, and then when these devices come through, I want to migrate the data between hubs. Okay. So that's, that's how it's set up. Uh, mm -hmm. And now I've got a script that will simulate 100 different symmetric toasters mm -hmm. because you know it's, it's real when it's many, it's fake when it's one. Agreed. So each of these toasters, the only thing that's different about the image is mm -hmm. that they have a different ID and thus key. Okay. Um, everything else is the same because I mass produce toasters. Okay. So we and kick off. a toaster off. is a toaster. Right. It's <laughs> if toaster is a toaster is a toaster. So we're going to spin up all 100 toasters. Yeah, all 100 toasters go. are there. And now I have Toasters RS East. Okay. And now when I hit refresh, you'll see that I have a whole bunch of symmetric co toasters mm -hmm. that have all been provisioned. Yep. And when I go back uh, and check into one of them to look at the device yeah, twin, yeah. you'll see that the device twin has been set appropriately. Okay. So click in there and I see, yep, in fact, use case is set to demo. Makes sense. Cool. Okay. So, uh, but I made a mistake here. Um, Did you? I don't actually live on the East Coast. I wanted these to go to the West Coast. So okay. while while my toasters get shipped back over, I'm just going to change my target mm -hmm. to Enverdi Toasters West. And yeah. here's my hub Enverdi Toasters West. There are no okay. devices here. Yep. Uh, I'm going to just hit save. Okay. And that so now I'm going to reprovision all my symmetric toasters by running my script again. Okay. And all my toasters are doing is running through the exact same code they did on the first provision. Yep. And only this time they're being told by DPS, okay, actually you go to Enverdi Toasters West now. Even Forget though they had been provisioned previously with symmetric keys, they're actually checking if that's still the valid key for connecting to a hub or it, it's checking okay. to make sure that it's still assigned to the right hub. Got it, got it. So got it. it goes back to DPS and mm -hmm. says, Hey, is this still the right place for me? And yeah. in this case DPS is saying, No, you want to go over here instead. Okay, got it. You can have a logic on your device that says, I'm trying to connect to the old one. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. Let me go back to DPS as well, right? So you could, the logic on the device depends on your scenario. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Some people want to, to check in with a provisioning service once a day. Yeah. Some people on reboot. Um, we recommend mm -hmm. that you just have some way of remotely telling a device that you need a reprovision mm -hmm. because you need to command the device. For, yes. Again, yeah, yeah. for security yeah. reasons. Yeah. If when updating it just in DPS isn't mm -hmm. sufficient to tell the device. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. So now if I go into Toasters are us East and I hit refresh, you'll see that there's some stragglers, but they yep. are they're quickly being removed. Yeah, they're they're being removed. And if yes. I go over to Enverdi Toasters West and hit refresh, I there. have all of my toasters here. Yes. Uh, and if I wanted to, I could go into the twin uh, and show you that I still have that same tag set. Uh, I believe you. Yeah, I figured I you'd say you. that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so now I want to show the second one, which is the okay. custom toasters. Okay. So for these toasters, just like the the previous one, uh, I can. Um, all the toasters are using a key that's derived from this group key. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But in this case, I'm going to trigger an Azure function when they come through. Okay. And these toasters could go to one of my two IoT hubs. Okay. And so here I've just set it up to be custom to trigger an mm -hmm. Azure function. I've connected it to my Azure function. Okay. Uh, and I'm not giving any data in the enrollment. Okay. Because here in my function is where I'm defining where my toasters actually okay. go. So, um, I could be doing whatever. I could be looking this up in an ERP system. I could be yep. texting own, an own operator to, yep. to get some mm -hmm. data. But what I'm doing here, since this is a cute demo, is I'm setting <laughs> a tag of can toast pizza pockets to true okay. and setting a, a desired toastiness level of five because I want middle of the road toast in this toaster. Okay. And then I'm just going to select a hub at random mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. assign these toasters to. Yep. This is a fantastic use of serverless, right? Because yeah. you can have the scenario of this burst of requests you know, coming from a bunch of devices that are connected like at the same time. Yeah. While sometimes nothing, right? So you basically really are leveraging functions and the serverless aspects of it for what, what it's been designed for. Exactly. And awesome. the great thing with functions too is it'll scale for you depending on the load. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You can yeah. go, hey, all devices, go live now. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, when you do your switch of hub or something like that, then actually we'll go back into that process and maybe all together. So that's yeah. the, okay, cool, awesome. Yeah, so when I run my custom toasters here, again, I'm doing 100 different ones, mm -hmm. um, but let me go then, yeah. back there while, while we're waiting. 
and refresh, mm -hmm. and you'll see that I've got some custom toasters starting to to boot up. Yep, yep. And connect. And if I go back here, where are my symmetric? You'll see some of the yep. custom toaster coming in. in yeah. There. And so you see these custom toasters are, have been assigned to either hub. Yep, yep. And when I look at the device twin, you'll see that I've got my tag and my desired property set up okay. just how I wanted it. So what I could have done is do a database lookup of who bought my toaster yeah. and what configuration did they want and return that to the provisioning service. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, or you can do something silly like setting Kento's Pizza Pockets with the toastiness level. <laughs> Love it. Okay, well, yeah. that's, these are new features that are pretty awesome, serving, you were saying, different needs, like customers who are actually not beginners, but have simple needs mm -hmm. for uh, DPS, and those who actually have more complex scenarios, basically you're giving them all the keys for them to do whatever they need, right? Yeah, giving them the tools to, to do what they want. Okay, and everything is available now. This is yes. actually available today. Yeah, it's all available today. Uh, it is in public preview, and we're mm -hmm. going to look to GA by the end of this year. Of course, mm -hmm. depending on customer feedback, if we need to make changes, we'll make changes. Awesome. Thanks, Nicole. Yeah, thank you, Olivia. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and see you soon. Don't forget to subscribe for the show. Mm -hmm.